can I we talk about the Cowboys real quick? Please quickly? do hit it. Let's get um, into some NFL from the week. My my favorite part of DeMarvio and Overshone's performance, even though on the field it was impressive, him leading like the the pre after the, the, the team huddled after the pregame warm ups, that's a that's a strong statement from a guy, trust me, who's been in an NFL locker room and Bill been a rookie on an NFL team. To see DeMarvio and Overshone kind of leading the team huddle after warm ups, that's I guess I, I, that's a lot of respect given to a rookie. Yeah. Usually, you know, rookies don't have that type of clout just yet. Shows you that the Cowboys are serious about him and that he's earned some respect already in the locker room. I was I was shocked by that, actually. I'm yeah. flabbergasted, honestly. But uh, I'm happy for him. Just shows you that they really like DeMarvio and Overshell. Yeah. It's really well, made an impression. You know, their draft, I mean, obviously they're hoping for a lot from Mozzie Smith, their first-round pick out of Michigan. He hasn't he's had a solid camp, according to all, but, you know, he's an interior defensive tackle. I mean, you're not going to make a lot of flash plays. He's there to hold up the line and bring that that run support. Mm-hmm. And then Luke Shoemaker, the uh, the young tight end who they took in the second round, he was injured to start camp, so he's just kind of getting his feet wet. But, man, DeMarvion overshone their third-round pick. Deuce yeah. Vaughn, the sixth-round pick. Uh, Deuce showed out, too. They're showing out. Now, let's yeah. hear from DeMarvion, because after the game, we we'll talk about a guy out of Arp, Texas, tiny little school, and then of course came to the University of Texas, and you know by his by the end of his career here was 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 a big time playmaker for the Longhorns. Originally a safety. Originally a safety. <laughs> now he's playing linebacker in Dan Quinn's defense. You want to talk about a guy who's just happy to be a Dallas Cowboy, to like be putting on that Cowboy star, a kid mm. from Texas, uh, you know, playing for the Dallas Cowboys. Let's hear Demarvi on Overshone after his first action in the preseason on Saturday. I did, definitely, you know, putting the jersey on. You know, I put it on for OTA, but it was for pictures. But, you know, putting it on and putting my armbands on and my sleeve and realizing that I'm going to do this for the Dallas Cowboys. You know, a lot of people dream about that. A lot of people say, man, I want to do that. And uh, I'm, I'm part of that 1% that, that got the chance to do that. So I, I definitely, before the game, took five deep breaths and just, just soaked it in. And like I say, I, I wouldn't want to be nowhere else. I'm, I'm glad to be here. And. You know, like I said, I'm looking forward to the rest of the year. Happy to be here, man. Living and, out a dream. And I heard, um, and I might have to send a sound. There was a, so it's a story. I, I, we have to ask, or we have to ask, someone will have to ask DeMarvin and Overshone about it, that apparently the Cowboys, he wanted he wanted zero as a number. Agent because he's zero. Agent Zero, right? That's his nickname. He loves Agent Zero. And the Cowboys told him he has to earn it. That if he earns it, if he earns zero, then they'll give it to him. But he, they're not just going to give him zero. And then he's, he's got to earn it. 35 and, until. And apparently, like, he's on a mission to earn zero. And I don't know what the timetable is on it, uh, but we'll get that sound. But that's the story going around Dallas that Agent Zero's got to earn that number. And that's when the Cowboys will, will like, crown him <laughs> as Agent Zero. Now at the NFL level, you could be Agent Zero, too. I love it. Oh, yeah. No, I, he's a, he's, I think he's happy, too, not only because, yeah, it is a dream of any kid playing football in Texas to be a Dallas Cowboy, whether yeah. they like it or not. No t- no kid's going to tell you, I want to. I grew up wanting to be a Texan. No. No, I'm not going <laughs> to say that. No, that ain't happening. That ain't no. happening. <laughs> that ain't happening. Um, but also, I think he just knows he's in a perfect place um, while Dan Quinn is still there. Yeah. That a coach that looks at his skill set and doesn't see his skills, doesn't see the shortcomings in his skill set as a weakness or something that must be coached out. He looks at those, uh, that really unique skill set, a guy who's a hybrid like DeMarvin Overshone, and he looks at it as a strength because his defense is full of hybrids. And he loves hybridized players and positionless football. So I think that's part of the reason he's so giddy is because he knows there there isn't a better place for him to be in the NFL right now yeah. than playing for Dan Quinn's defense. And Dan Quinn probably goes up to him all the time and is like, brother, I got a plan for you. I got a plan. I got a vision. <laughs> yeah. I know exactly how I'm going to use you. Don't you worry. I got I got a plan and a vision for you. You just keep doing what you're doing. And you played the sound of Michael Parsons, uh, you know, pl- saying complimentary things about him. Mike McCarthy has talked about how he's already got a professional mindset. He really is off to and a hell of a start. You just said he led the team out of the chant, right out of that's the. That, uh, I mean that that's, that's a rookie. Crazy. That is crazy. I'm telling you right now, that's crazy. I was a guy that was drafted, you know, round that he was a third round pick. I was a fourth round pick, coming to already be leading the huddle like that at, after the warm ups. And I know it's you know it's guys who are you know Jags and Jabronis, not the the first, not the not the big contract guys. All right, not the first yeah, round yeah. picks, but still, that's a lot of respect for him. Yeah, well, he's leading the, the younger guys, I guess is what you would say. He's like, I'm a leader. Yeah, hey, I'm, I'm going to because you know, be a leader the Cowboys didn't play any of their starters on offense, very few on defense. Yeah. But so you got to see some of these guys who are trying to make this team. Uh, you know, guy like Demarvin Overshore, he's going to make it. Let's hear from. Uh, I wanted to play it. this for you too while we're talking, Demo. 
and Agent Zero, who may earn that number zero before too long. Uh, how about uh, let's hear a little bit from Brandon Belt and uh, Brian Broadus, the Cowboys insiders, mm-hmm. their thoughts. And, you know, what you saw on Saturday is nothing new. They've been seeing this out in Oxnard for three weeks now. Uh, first time the fans have gotten a chance to see DeMarvion Overshone had a big third down stop, was in on six tackles. Mm-hmm. Here's uh, Broadus and uh, Brandon Belt talking about what they're seeing from uh, from number 35. I thought of him as an early day three guy, but this is why the scouting staff gets paid the way they do is because they identify these guys that are really talented. And DeMarvian Overshone is somebody who has checked every box uh, during this process in terms of, you know, the OTA mini camp, the practices into the padded practices, now into this game where he stands up Tank Bigsby in the hole. That's a big running back who who makes his money, uh, you know, being a really physical runner. But DeMarvian Overshone, a guy who it's showing up on the practice field, it's showing up in the locker room, it's showing up on the sidelines as a leader. Just everything you're hearing about him right now, he seems to be everything the Cowboys wanted when they picked him at number 90. Yeah, I think you got him absolutely right, Bobby. I mean, I, I know that it's funny when you go through these, when you watch your university play these games, you kind of feel like you have an idea of where these guys are. Uh, you know, I, myself with you know, with Clark and with Cox, you with Overshone. The one thing with this, with Overshone, that I was super impressed was his ability to fit. You mentioned when he was able to take on Tank Bigsby in the hole right there. He didn't overrun the play. He was square to the line. He saw the opportunity. He knew it was a short yardage defense. He didn't give any ground. He was able to step up, make a physical play, and more importantly, make a, a physical finish in order to to get them off the field. All right, Brian brought us Brandon Belt right yeah. there, some Cowboys insiders. Yes, and uh, You know, it wasn't just Demo, though, because Deuce Vaughn. Deuce was loose. Nobody, the height, right? nobody who watches Big 12 football is surprised by what Deuce Vaughn did no. <laughs> to that Jaguars defense because he's been doing that Breaking to ankles. elite defensive, elite, elite defenders in the Big 12 all really all his career. And some people said here in Central Texas, when you watch him in high school, he was doing the same Cedar thing. Ridge. So it don't, yeah, the size does not matter. It really, I remember, like I said, I, Quinn Griffin, I think is his, his name from uh, Oklahoma, and he was the same way. You really cannot see these guys. Until it's a little too late, and if you're a step behind, if you're a step late with these players, and you're playing catch up with the type of quickness and shiftiness that these players have, and it's not only that, they, there's power involved. You see them small; they're not like small like Cavante Turpin, where he's light and small. No, no, there's power with them thighs. <laughs> right? These guys can the squat. Balance. Yeah, in the balance. So yeah, the arm tackle's not going to work, and you're supposed to get your pads lower than his. But lower you can't pad do. Did you get that, dude? <laughs> it is impossible. So it trust me, when they're in the open field, you just want to make sure you keep them bottled up. Because when they get in the open field, oh man, it's they t- they cause all types of problems. Yeah. Time to take them down. And you saw it. Yeah, you did see it. And he had fifty yards, he had a long run and you know, guys trying – you just heard uh, Brian Broaddus talking about fitting in the hole. Yeah. There were safeties coming up for Jacksonville fitting in the hole and grabbing air because Deuce did a spin move or, you know, hit the X button or whatever he did, did that little juke. Mm. Uh, so even if you can see him, it's still hard to get him on the ground. And then you're right. Yeah, you know, what's funny because, you know, we will pick up our Ian Rod B. Horn top 20 countdown today at number, number uh, 15 as we hit the top 15, 15 today. But we had Oklahoma at number 16 on Friday, and we talked to our buddy Tyler McComas, and we were talking about Quentin Griffin. Oh, yeah. Who he reminded us scored nine touchdowns against the Longhorns yeah. in his career. Exactly. <laughs> nine. He scored more touchdowns against Texas than I think Texas scored in that time span well, in the there. rivalry. Yeah. Yes, nine to seven. Nine to seven, he told us. So, he was like, oh, great, thanks. Yeah. No, and I, so as, a def- as a defender going against him, I remember how tough it was to find him. And by the way, I remember Darren Sproles, too. I remember all Darren Sproles. I remember all these guys. And and when you get to though when these guys, their skill set is so refined and so lethal that the size, how diminutive they are, it really doesn't matter as much. Not not every little guy can do what they do, but to make it to the highest levels and still be able to put guys in a spin cycle like that, professionals, it just tells you, yeah, he's gonna be able to do that. He, at the NFL level, the same way he did it at the college level. Not with the frequency. Give them some time, but yeah, the cow if they use them effectively, yeah, well, this ball will be that kind of weapon of those for the things, Cowboys. You know, being down at the Astros game on Saturday, Jose Altuve, just forget the height, right? He's short. forget it. Yeah, at this he point, can hit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he can play. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> talks about it anymore. It's not even. You know, it's, it's, yeah, it, it's exactly. amazing when you see him stand next to somebody tall, just how short he is. But at the same time, he's a football player. He, he's a, he can ball. And, you know, the Jacksonville defense now got to see that up close. And he'll be a factor for the Cowboys this year. Obviously, Tony Pollard's going to be the lead running back. And 
And now they got uh, Malik Davis, the, the second-year man out of Florida. But this guy is going to be pushing for, for playing time. You, just, you have to have a package for Deuce Vaughn because uh, he's just going to create you plays do. in the open position. You're right about him hiding behind tall linemen in front of him, whether it's on a screen pass or draw plays. He's patient. Yeah, he's got he's the patience to it. And then by the time you see him, he gone. Oh, yeah. You already your, – your angle is off. You've <laughs> just wrong. Your body position is wrong. Oh, man, he is – yeah, he he's fun to watch, but he's a nightmare to, to, to try to tackle. I I feel for those guys because I've been there. I I remember being that guy. Well, that's the other thing you would think he'd be he'd be at, be at risk to taking a big hit because he isn't very big. But man, it's you, the they, opposite. It's the opposite. Players yeah, are tentative. Yeah. They want to come up and make sure they're breaking down properly because yeah. they don't want to get their yeah, nobody, ankles broken. Nobody's coming in there trying to lay a haymaker on Deuce Vaughn. No, you bet not. Because he'll make you look bad. You're gonna be on that Sports Center highlight reel. Oh. You, know you got posterized. Yeah, exactly. No, man, you, you break, you're right. You're breaking down. You're trying to bring your feet with you. You're being very careful about your angle when you're going up against Deuce Vaughn.